Hello everybody, welcome. Yeah, well, as you can see, you caught me on the wheel and um, I was just finishing off a small a small round pot and uh, so why don't you join me? We'll bring the camera a little closer and it's one of those kind of it was I got to the end of making some things and then I as we all do we maybe have a, a, an odd lump of clay left over and I was uh, I didn't know what to do with it so I um, in the end I, <laughs> I threw this round round pot so there we are I think we can we got some light on the subject good right so I'll just go back on the wheel there and we'll talk about the round pot that leftover lump of clay I don't think I'm going to need my apron because this is all kind of dry dry you know I'm just trimming so round pot well of course here it is the thing about just a leftover lump of clay, I think this is a pound of clay, it's pretty light, and I threw it. Um, I threw it with the, with the idea that I would actually trim the foot, but of course if you have a pot with a very narrow top like that, you know, if you put it down on the wheel head like that and try to trim it, although it's possible to do, you can actually damage the top quite a lot here. In fact, I had a go at doing it, and uh, I didn't like what was happening to the top, so I, I thought, well, I need a chuck. Well, I didn't have a chuck, really, to hand. In fact, that's something I need to make, and maybe we'll do a video clip on making chucks, because they're actually v vitally useful and important to have in your studio, especially in a situation like this, where you've got a pot and you're faced with having to trim the bottom of it, how do you do it? Well, I looked around on my shelves behind me up here and I came across this small little lidded casserole. So I thought, haha, we will, we will improvise. Of course, improvisation is the name of the game, isn't it? We are potters. We are not cuckoo heads, we can't think. So we have to we have to learn to improvise, don't we? So well that will what you need to look for is a basically a pot that's going to accommodate that upside down and hold it nicely, you see, nicely in position. And as you can see, I think you'll agree that that holds it very nicely. So then of course what you want to do is just tap center your 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 chuck. Now I'm not going to get clay and stick it around the base of this little casserole because this little casserole I need to put in the kiln <laughs> needs to be finished. I don't want it all covered in clay. So basically I've already mostly done this actually. But while I was doing it I thought Huh, good material for a clip here. We can we can find some teach good teaching material, can't we, out of this little exercise. So as you can see, I mean now when you put the pot in the chuck you may find it it, it, it does that. So you just have to be patient with it and just level it up. Basically where's my ruler? Um, the top the top here, you see you want to get it level so that's that's what you're going to have to what you're going to have to do so you're going to have to just level that up as best as you can tap center it give it a gentle push and then now it will come off so you do need to be I mean mine will come off but it wouldn't do if it had pieces of clay 
So just finishing off here the trimming of this the base of this small round pot. And that's it. Okay, I've just basically just done what you what you see there. So now you could argue, well, well, Simon, well, you've, why did you bother to empty out the, the foot? I mean, why bother to do that? Does it serve? Does it serve any purpose? Does it serve any function? Having the the foot ring emptied out with with, with your trim tool? Well, it doesn't serve any function really. Um, I suppose it does two things. It lightens the the pot very slightly and the other thing is it's more of a decorative thing when you feel the pot when you handle the pot when you look at it it's got a cleaned out foot like that you know and that adds I think it adds something to the pot so so now now what am I going to do with it haha -ha. Well, let's see, where's my um, banding wheel? Get my banding wheel, here it is. Behind me. So I thought what I would do, just clean this off a bit. By the way, let me just get my, um, my three in one. Three in one. Never a bad idea, you know, with your with your banding wheel to periodically give it a little drop of oil. You find that they spin a lot better if you give them a little oil. So that's that. Um, yes, I'm just looking for a paddle. And I've got here I've got various paddles here. And it's sometimes useful, you know, when you have a paddle to, to have one side, and you notice this one doesn't, this one is got on both sides. Um, but it is actually useful, this one's got it. It would have had it on the other side as well, but someone has written keep practicing on here. Who? Can't imagine who would have done that. <laughs> Somebody sent me that actually. Very nice. That would be, it would have been nice, wouldn't it, if it had been written the other way around in mirror writing. So then when you, when you hit it on the pot, it's got to keep practicing on the pot. <laughs> but it is, it is actually good to have a plain side to your paddle. And... Um, For what I'm going to show you right now, I've got all an assortment of goodies in here. Have I, have, you shown you, have I shown you these? I think I have. Meat tenderizers, graters, different kinds of graters. These, these this is actually rather good. These, these uh, thinner ones. A thinner one gives you more. You know, if you, it'll give you more, more definition. Rather than just a broad, a broad. Of course, the meat tenderizer. We, we've seen that in action, haven't we? Bang, 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 bang. Actually, that might be. I'll leave that one out just in case we get an inspired thought. You never know when you're going to get an inspired thought, do you? So you better be ready. <laughs> okay. Put this little bag of tricks under here. I hang this off the back of my wheel. You see. I 
don't know where I put my glasses. I've left them somewhere. Never mind. Okay. So yeah. So what I, what I, I actually there's lots of things you see you can do, of course, to a pod, aren't there? When it, when it's in this at this stage, when it's leather hard and it's slightly soft, it's nice. It's just at the right stage to do something to it. I could take this and I could whack it into the side there and I get a nice imprint. You want it, and it'll do it now at this, at this stage without probably cracking, you see. If you leave it when it's too hard and then you, then you start whacking it, of course it'll just crack because it's too hard. So you need to, you need to do it at the right moment. Well, let's have a look. So I'm going to take this, which is the plain side of this paddle, because what I wanted to do was give the pot oh, what a beautiful noise. I wanted to give the pot a flat side, you see, like that. And as you can see, it's, it's, it's indented it very nicely, hasn't cracked or anything like that. So this is sort of gives like a faceted look and I'm going to do it in pretty much the same way. So I've done one facet there or one flat there. So I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to do the other flat exactly, exactly on the other side, you see. I'm going to try to Now, now we have two flats. And now I'm going to do another flat on this side. Exactly perpendicular, you see. Perpendicular at right angles. like four flats actually. I quite like four flats. Yeah, I'm just trying to get them even. You see how easy it is. The clay is very responsive at this stage. And that now, you see, what I've effectively done, I've created four sides to the pot, which changes it from being a round pot, where there is, where you might think, oh, what kind of decoration can I do on that? And you've got such a big landscape, if you like, to, to put a decoration on. And by having four flats, it sort of gives you four defined surfaces where you then can put some kind of motif on that flat. Uh, it lends itself very nicely for that, that, kind of, that kind of treatment. Okay, so that's, that's basically it other than Other than now is actually, of course, a good time to get your seal out. Now, just a thought here about sealing. Um, where to seal? Now, sometimes and very often I do seal here within the, the foot ring. Other times, let's say, let's have a look on this casserole, the small casserole. Yeah, there's a seal just there. Sometimes, though, I like to put the seal just slightly on the side. Um, if I push here, I know this is because it's fairly soft. 
and I can't really get my finger finger into the bottom to support the base. If I push the seal in there now, good chance it may push push in and push a dent in the bottom, and I may not get a good impression with the seal. So uh, in times like that, sometimes it's good to put the seal just here on the side. The only thing you have to bear in mind is that when you when you um, when you glaze, that if the glaze um, covers over the seal, that you may need to just lightly rub the glaze over the seal at that point, just to allow the seal to show through. I've got another seal these days I'm putting on pots, which is USA. That's it. So, there we go, USA. Incidentally, not a bad idea. Keep your seals in a box. All right, because seals can get broken, they get clogged up. You keep them clean like that way, you keep them a bit protected. This little box I bought at one of those dollar shops. And you can do the same. Keep your seals in a safe place. And then I know where they are as well. You know, the seal, how many times did you lost your seal? And uh, they get lost in the bottom of the toolbox, they get, they fall into the, off the side here, they fall down into the clay, they the seal, they end up all over the place. And yeah, it's really annoying when you come to want to finish your pot and you, and you, and you can't find the seal. So keep your seals in one specific place and it's easier to keep them in something like a box. They won't get lost. Okay folks, well that's it. Um, we, I've got a workshop here actually tomorrow and I've only got one person coming. So if there's, <laughs> if there's anybody out there who wants to come on a workshop, please get in touch. and. Uh, as I say, it starts tomorrow. Not much notice for you, I know, but probably for anybody who's living locally here, Pennsylvania way, if, you're, if you want to come for a weekend. We've got plenty of room in here, and we've got five, got seven wheels here. Two leech kick wheels and five shimpos. So, if you fancy a weekend of practicing, um, doing something a bit spontaneous, getting out of a rut, <laughs> then do join us and you can find details about that on my website simonleachpottery.com go there and you'll see other things, tools and bits and bobs as well okay, see you around, bye for now He's a nice little pot, isn't he? Yeah. I think so. A satisfying little shape. Okay, folks. We'll see you. Bye-bye.